Buon Natale a tutti! Un casco anche per noi! È una bella festa! Bene, grazie! Buon Natale! A week later, the Italian Expeditionary Force celebrated Christmas under the African sun and under a new commander-in-chief, Marshal Pietro Badoglio. Mussolini had finally lost patience with De Bono's dithering and replaced him with a more ruthless leader. The brutal Badoglio was to take the war into a new and crueler phase. Chianti bottles from the Christmas cactus brought the festive spirit to Italy's lonely soldiers camped in a dry land. As the presents were passed around, the bombing of Ethiopia intensified. There were also Christmas presents for the people of Ethiopia to be flown in by the 103rd Squadron. Special delivery to Desi, Haile Selassie's new headquarters, north of Addis Ababa on the edge of the battle zone. Avanzate da nord-ovest, non abbassatevi troppo sul ghiacciaio. Abbiamo già colpito dalle strade. Indietro! Indietro! Indietro Avanzatevi da lì! Bocca al lupo, eh! The Red Cross flag no longer protected the Ethiopians. The Emperor's presence in Desi attracted attack. When the Christmas bombs stopped falling, Haile Selassie inspected the remains of Desi's Red Cross hospital. It had been hit by 40 bombs. Badoglio had turned to poison gas and the bombing of civilian targets to speed up his civilizing mission. He wanted no awkward European witnesses from the International Red Cross to see the victims of bombing raids and the flesh blistered by gas. But the Red Cross volunteers, British, Swedish, Egyptian, remained. Ethiopian casualties were heavy, but the Emperor's chiefs marched to counterattack. The old warlord Ras Mulugeta marched north. Ras Kassa and Ras Seyum menaced Makale from mountain strongholds. And Ras Imru attacked on the western flank. Badoglio was determined to wipe them out, one by one. He would stop at nothing. The Ethiopian peasant warriors marched slowly north with their wives and a few days' supplies.
They fought fiercely, fearlessly, in the only way they knew. Each day at dusk they would withdraw from battle, and they never fought on Sundays. But Haile Selassie knew their best chance of victory lay in guerrilla warfare. Be cunning, be fierce, he told his warriors. Do not mass together. Do not wear light-colored clothes. Stay hidden. Strike suddenly. Only the shrewd Ras Imru followed his emperor's advice. His men raided convoys in Italian-held territory, harassed road gangs, seized guns and ammunition, wrecked enemy morale. In the new year, Badoglio's Eritrean corps moved against Ras Kassa and Ras Seum in Tigre. The Italian mechanized columns could not move quickly in the wild mountains of Tigre, where mules proved more mobile than trucks. Marshal Badoglio knew his troops were not equipped to fight a guerrilla war. His strategy was to lure the Ethiopians into open battle. Superior radio communications were critical to Badoglio's strategy. Orders were transmitted fast as news of enemy movements was received. The Askaris marched into the hills to surround Ras Seum's army in a pincer movement.
Ras Sayum's army was destroyed in Tigray. Prisoners were herded into camps. Irreplaceable weapons were lost. Without modern arms, the Ethiopians' courage was tragically futile. Many of the prisoners had lost brothers on the battlefield, killed as they tried to tear the guns from the enemy's hands. Now they have lost their guns and their honor in the humiliation of capture. The Regia Aeronautica ruled the skies unchallenged. Reconnaissance aircraft patrolled all day, mapping the land and looking for the white cotton shamas which betrayed the enemy. Bombers terrorized towns, villages and marching columns with almost complete impunity. Italy's air power decided the war. Their anti-aircraft guns in Ethiopia was the Emperor's Ehrlichon, mounted on a rock terrace outside a bomb-proof cave in the hills near Desi. The cave had become his headquarters after constant bomb attacks had driven him from the town. Mm -hmm. 